Hey everyone, this is a DeFi enthusiast here. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. I've been really busy building a few things, making uh, and I'll be talking about all of those very soon. But right now, I want to update you guys about the crypto market. So a few months ago, I told my private group when the crypto market was at about 600 billion or 700 billion, I said we will be going back above a trillion very soon uh, and I said I said in a few months we, we would be doing that and as 2023 started we started to see all that recovery taking place um, uh, currently right now the crypto market cap is at about 1 trillion 170 billion 694 million 282,414 dollars so this is something which was uh, predicted by me and um, even the last bull run, I told my private group that we would see a three to four trillion dollar market cap. And at that time we were only at 400 billion and, and some people laughed at that idea but we all know what happened. We did reach above three trillion in the previous bull run, and so where does all that come from? That comes from experience. That comes from me knowing the market and understanding the market. Um, I know how this market works. Now, with that said, uh, the crypto markets look healthy. They're pretty. They're doing very well. The recovery has been great. Bitcoin right now is at $24,624. Ethereum is at $1,694 at the time of this recording. Tether is still the most popular stable coin. And uh, <clears throat> all of this is happening uh, regardless of all the regu regulatory framework that the SEC is doing. And the SEC has been making a lot of, um, you know, very, very irrational decisions, I would say. Like, for example... Uh, they did. They, they decided to sue Kraken. Now Kraken eventually budged, and they paid thirty million to the SEC. They shut down their U.S. Uh, uh, they shut down their staking services for their U.S. customers as well. And Kraken is the most solvent exchange. Really, it really is. And for them to do that is, I guess. I guess the SEC just got to them. You know, that's the only way to put it. But that uh, really created a great scenario for um, what I would say um, for the LSDs, which are liquidity, liquidity, liquid staking derivatives. And uh, that's, a, that's very bullish for DeFi. So the, so the popularity of liquid, liquid staking der derivatives has increased significantly in recent months, resulting in a surge in cash flow in DeFi. LSDs are a relatively new type of token that enables stakers to augment potential returns by unlocking liquidity for their stake cryptocurrencies, such as Ethereum. LSDs have been exploding in popularity across the Ethereum ecosystem and have the potential to become equally as widespread among other layer one networks, such as Polygon and Avalanche. LSDs are already paying a, playing a significant role in DeFi, making up over 20% of the entire total value locked across, across liquid, liquid staking protocols. The dominance of Lido alone, currently the largest, staking, uh, the, 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 the largest liquid staking protocol, is over 17% of DeFi's TVL as of February 2023. So, um, so... Uh, how do LZs simulate DeFi activity? L LZs grabbed the attention of DeFi users after Ethereum adopted the proof-of-stake consensus algorithm, which replaces mining with staking. Uh, ETH holders can now stake their tokens to maintain the network and generate an annual yield. However, two conditions limit access to staking for regular token holders. First, there is a minimum deposit limit of 32 Ethereum to join the block validation battle. Second, 
the stake Ethereum remains located on the beacon chain until the Shanghai Ethereum update is completed. And even then, rewards will gradually become uh, available. Liquid staking protocols solve the first problem by pooling Ethereum from multiple holders to facilitate partic participation in Ethereum's block validation process. Thus, protocols such as Lido enable Ethereum holders to stake without having to run a validator node. Liquid staking protocols not only enable fractional deposits in their staking pools, but also offer stakers derivative, derivative tokens based on a one-to-one -one ratio in the form of liquid staking derivatives. Stakers can use LSD tokens in the broader DeFi markets to leverage yield opportunities. Thanks to LSD tokens, stakers can multiply the, the benefits from their lock tokens, which otherwise would only generate staking rewards. So um, LSDs are one of the most bullish narratives in my view. Of course, Lido is there. And uh, as you know, you need 32 Ethereum to basically uh, start getting a lot of rewards. Uh, for you know for, to really benefit from the proof of stake consensus mechanism on ethereum but i think one of the biggest winners of this are rocket pool um and rocket pool does exactly this you can basically stake your ethereum here they have right now 2106 node operators 403,552 ethereum staked it's basically decentralized ethereum staking uh, it's a decentralized ethereum staking protocol this is also a liquid uh, an, an LSD basically and uh, decentralized non custodial. All right, and you guys can have a look at rocketpool.net, R O C K E T P O L dot net. And uh, of course, its governance token, its main token is RPL, which is Rocket Pool, right now at $53.56. Uh, the all-time low for this was absolutely impressive. So if you got it in 2018, yeah, you would <laughs> you would have made an absolute killing on this. Uh, obviously, these things need vision, and some people got in at that time. Some people got in in 2019, and some in 2020, and they also benefited a lot. But I think as the markets are recovering, I feel that Rocket Pool is going to go much much higher. We could potentially see at least another two and a half x to five x for sure. Uh, again, none of this is financial advice, just my opinion. And I'm just being conservative, and uh, because uh, a lot of people cannot afford 32 Ethereum, and this is where Rocket Pool comes in. It's uh, you get the benefits of holding Ethereum, you for locking it. You get you get the main token, which is RPL. You can use that in different DeFi protocols and in different use cases, even for trading and all sorts of things. So um, I think I think this narrative of liquid staking derivatives is very, very bullish. And, um, you know, if you really want, you know, you can like you, you can get generous yield opportunities, you know, on lending platforms as well by using your LSD tokens. So um uh, several DeFi lending protocols have integrated LSDs into collateral markets. Among them is Euler Finance. The Ethereum-based non-custodial lending protocol allows users to lend and borrow several LSDs such as uh, CBETH and STETH derivatives that are facilitated by Lido and Coinbase. Um, recently, Euler added support for CBETH, uh, the LSD token issued by Coinbase to Ethereum stakers who choose to stake with the exchange. Uh, prior to the listing, CBETH holders couldn't leverage their collateral to facilitate other market opportunities. So, um, the the what's really interesting is is that, especially with all this SEC crackdown on centralized exchanges and you know them not allowing the U.S. Uh, customer base uh, for them to not allow the U.S. customers to not be able to stake their tokens on these centralized exchanges. This creates a. This should create a much broader market for liquid staking derivatives, and I think Rocket Pool is going to be is going to be one of the biggest benefactors out of this, uh, out of all of this uh, thing. So please do your own research on this. Now coming to um, uh, the SEC again, 
uh, the SEC decided to, you know, um, uh, is planning to ban, uh, is planning to take action against BUSD by calling it a security. Now, a sec- <laughs> I mean, how do you how do you profit off of a stable coin? Um, you know, in terms of, you know, does it grow? No, it's pegged to the U.S. dollar. So I think there's going to be a long case that is, that's going to be that's going to keep going for several years, in my opinion, when it comes to this. But definitely, it's it's shaken the market. It's given more room for for tether to grow, um, and uh, and I think and I think that 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 BUSD is like they're unable to you know sort of get. I mean, BUSD is still massive, but. You know, these sort of things that are being con- conducted by the SEC are just way too much, in my opinion. I just think it's uh, it's absolutely it's absolutely ridiculous. And what's interesting is they're going after Paxos, who issued the stablecoin to begin with. So Binance is not di- directly under attack, but their stablecoin is. Um, and their stablecoin is issued by Paxos. So uh, Coinbase weighs in on, on SEC banning uh, BUSD. And and they said that you know stable coins are not securities, which is exactly the case. So um, so this should be an interesting development. Um, and obviously, this you know brings a huge question mark in many ways as to what will be the future of stable coins. Will it remain as a U.S. pegged stable coin, or will there be other fiat currencies that will be that will be replacing the stable coin mechanism? And what I feel is that um, uh, as CZ himself, Chan Ping Zhao, who was the uh, founder of Binance, he said, Chan Ping Zhao makes stablecoin prediction following SEC's Binance, uh, Binance BUSD enforcement action. Uh, the CEO of crypto exchange giant Binance says investors may turn to non-US dollar pegged and algorithmic stablecoins. Um, I told my private group uh, last year, that, uh, in my opinion, one of the first algorithmic stable coins that will be attacked would be uh, Terra Luna's UST. This was way before the attack. And um, the conspiracies are that BlackRock is behind it and everything. And I think they are because, you know, FTX and BlackRock, they, they colluded and, you know, they gained a lot from that because, um, you know, Sam Bankman, he was working directly for Gensler uh, and the SEC and, you know, he had big links in the Biden administration and so on and so forth. So the point is that these people, they don't like uh, things that they can't control. And UST was one of those things. It was innovative. It was different. It had an edge, um, of course. Um, and with that said, you know, you know, the the SEC couldn't do anything to an algorithmic stablecoin because the way it was designed designed is completely different and it does not follow under traditional financial instruments, if you know what I mean. So, um, you know, as CZ says, stable coins are still important. Most people's costs are still in fiat currencies. And so when the calculate returns, uh, when the calculate prices say most people use U.S. dollar prices for crypto because U.S. dollar stable coins are the most popular and the largest. Zhao Satan comes following reports that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's Commission, SEC, considers uh, considers initiating an enforcement action against crypto firm Paxos, which issues and operates BUSD in partnership with Binance for violating investor protection laws. The New York's New York Department of Financial Services also ordered Paxos to stop minting the stablecoin. Zhao says the popularity of U.S. spec stablecoins may decline as regulators clamp down on these assets, and I actually agree with Zhao here. Uh, Zhao says the popularity of U.S. Uh, so he says I think he, basically what he's saying is that given the current pressure and current stances taken by the regu- uh, regulators on the U.S. dollar-based stablecoins, he thinks that the industry will probably move away to a non-U.S. dollar-based stablecoin and maybe also back uh, back to algorithmic stablecoins. And the funny thing is, this is what I told my private group for the last two years that this is where we will be heading as you can see it's playing out to the t the way things are going and it's very very interesting uh that uh so that's what happens when you understand the markets and you know when you understand the sentiments and so on and so forth a lot of people can't navigate through that but 
I'm glad that I've been able to, and that's why my private group has been benefiting throughout all of this. Now, um, so coming to the next thing is um, MakerDAO. They're finally in the DeFi space. Uh, they're, they're introducing a rival to Aave called Spark Protocol. And uh, so this is a fork of Aave version 3, and, and this will increase the use case for the DAI stablecoin. Now, DAI is probably the most decentralized stablecoin out there, and it's absolutely incredible. I think MakerDAO, I think MakerDAO just don't get enough credit, you know, for how amazing they are, and uh, um, it's absolutely incredible how, how good this project is. So, Spark Protocol, which is a fork of Aave's version 3, will be a front-end app that allows users to interact with DAI in the form of borrowing, lending, and staking. According to an announcement on the MakerDAO forum, the development of a dedicated lending protocol represents a shift in focus from MakerDAO, which has aligned its revenue model with the issuance of DAI since, since the latter's inception in 2017. MakerDAO has formed Phoenix Labs, a research and development company that will be tasking that will be tasked with building the Spark Protocol. Spark Protocol's emergence as a potential rival to Aave, which has $4.6 billion in total value lock, comes after Aave voted to introduce its own yield-generating stablecoin dubbed GHO last year. The new protocol will be reinforced by pricing oracles or data sources provided by Chronicle Labs and Chainlink to enhance security in, ca in case one of the two, uh, two goes down or suffers an exploit. MakerDAO also announced the forthcoming deployment of EtherDAI, a synthetic liquid, liquid staking derivative. See, we were just talking about LSDs and how big they're going to be. Here we, here we go again. The LSD narrative is right there for you guys. Um, uh, so for Ether, that will be pegged at a one-to-one -one ratio with Ethereum. Liquid staking allows users to generate extra yields on top standard rewards for staking tokens in a network. The MakerDAO token maker is currently trading at 771 dollars uh, $771.85, having risen by 1.39% over the past 24 hours. So what's really interesting is also what what gives Spark the edge, or I would say what gives Spark the spark, <laughs> is that they have the uh, direct deposit module. This enables the interaction of the maker ecosystem with third-party lending pools, um, and uh, DSS Direct Deposit Aave DAI is a smart contract of this module that enables the transaction of DAI tokens from Maker to the respective lending pool of Aave. The goal of this smart contract is to ensure that the maximum variable interest rate for borrowing stays below a targeted interest rate decided by the Maker Maker uh, Maker governance. In the in, in the ratio of the total debt debt taken over the total li liquidity uh, put in the pool. Therefore, the higher the utilization of a pool, the higher becomes the variable interest rate. This strategy motivates liquidity providers to deposit capital in the, in the pool when utilization is high. The goal of DSS Direct Deposit Aave DAI is to limit the maximum variable interest rate for the DAI pool in Aave by depositing and withdrawing DAI from the pool as needed to achieve the functionality uh, the DSS Direct Deposit Aave DAI needs to be an authorized ward in the in the in the VAT and and to operate on a special ilk. So, um, uh, so the essential feature of the of this ilk is that it allows uh, the D, the DSS Direct Deposit Aave DAI to generate DAI tokens on the fly without requiring requiring a traditional collateral in another token. This means that you no longer need liquidity providers, and that means that Maker and Spark, their 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 DeFi venture Spark, they save a lot of money because liquidity providers always there's liquidity providing fees that benefit, of course, the liquidity providers, but also a lot of money goes into goes away from the project itself. So they have created an innovative way to keep the money there and uh, to not um, basically. They don't need any liquidity providers in order to do what they need to do. So I think Maker is one of the best projects. They keep innovating, and I think this is going to be a really, really big innovation. Look out for Spark. I think there might be a token uh, coming out for... I'm sure there's a governance token com coming out for this. So 
if that isn't bullish, I don't know what is. Um, so much value already given in, in, in such a short span of time. Now, just imagine what I do in my private group. <laughs> so speaking of that, let's talk about, uh, you know, the future of DeFi. And I've been uh, telling my people about all of this. Uh, the Let's talk about Gains Network, for example, Gains Trade. This is basically a perpetual DEX. And so basically, for the longest time, leverage, I mean, DEXs have allowed you to, to trade, right? But it was, but leverage trading was something that was only allowed on centralized exchanges. However, um, you know, the perpetual decentralized exchanges allow leverage trading on decentralized platforms. So you no longer need to keep your money on centralized exchanges because if it's not, it's not your keys, not your crypto. Now, I told my private group about GNS when it was at two dollars, and. I said that in a few months it should go to go to about eleven or twelve dollars, and if we look at the seven-day chart, which is very fascinating, um, here we go. On seventeen February, we touched twelve dollars, right? And um, and what's really interesting is is that. There, naturally, of course, there's going to be a, a, a retracement, right? But I think in the long run, this we could easily see a $20 to $30 GNS token. And that's being conservative for what it does because the perpetual DEXs, DEX narrative is very, very hot as well. And I think as more regulations come in, as more... As there's more, uh, as more centralized exchanges are clamped down, a lot of people are going to be moving more, most of their money for doing all these interesting, crazy trades on things like Gains Network, and the other one is is DX Vela Exchange (DXP), the new era of perpetual dexes. Now, I told my private group about Vela when it was about two dollars and eighty cents, and right now it's sitting at six dollars and fifty six cents. Uh, these both of these tokens, I've told my private group that they're midterm holds. Of course, they can sell whenever they want to. They can take profits whenever they want to. It's up to them. Um, but as you can see, um, I just I look at coins. I look at their fundamentals and um, and their pumpamentals as well, and what makes them tick basically. And uh, my private group has been profiting. For some time now, uh, we have done 10 X's, we have done 100 X's, we have done um, 200 X's, we have done 20 X's, uh, we, you know, even in the from the previous bull run. For example, I told my private group about Zilliqa when it was at 0 0.004 and uh, at its all time high, Zilliqa was above 25 cents uh, in, the, in the previous bull run. That's just one example. So you can clearly imagine how much money was made. Then, then you know, we told them about um, uh, Metis. Metis, I told my private group about Metis at about when it was like three or four dollars, and it went all the way above three hundred dollars in the previous bull run. And there are many, many examples and many, many great projects that I look into and I tell, and I basically cut out all the fluff. That is out there, and I try to give the best value to the people that, uh, that 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 I interact with. Now, of course, none of this is financial advice. However, with this said, as you can see, even right now, Vela, right, right in front of you, uh, and GNS, and there are a few private coins, you know, that haven't even launched yet, you know, and and already people have two x their money. <laughs> so what's going to happen is that. Uh, from now on, this is my last video, guys, as the DeFi enthusiast, okay? Uh, but before we get into that, I mean, the DeFi enthusiast channel is there. Uh, wait, but, but before we get into that, I want to talk about Drip as well. I haven't talked about Drip in a while. And I told everybody some time ago that Drip was going to have a major re retracement. However, you know, those who are short-term sellers will be at loss and those who kept hydrating while staking uh, are, are going to are going to benefit the most now drip is one of the best um, certificate of deposits in my opinion um, and uh, 
it, it bottomed at twenty cents. I I told my I told my private group that you know we're definitely going to hit maybe ten or twenty cents, and then it, it should start recovering because of all the great updates that that Forex Shark has made on his Telegram. I mean, going through all of that is going to be a, it's going to take a very long time, but. There is a lot, a lot of stuff coming out for Drip, and I'll probably do an, another video focused completely on Drip at some point, very soon. But however, we since then, since its bottom, it's doubled again. So if you even just got in at that twenty cent mark, you would have doubled your money. And for those who bought in at the very top, and if they kept hydrating, they would have a lot of them would have ROI if they just didn't claim too much. And uh, there is a strategy, two day, you know, most days you compound, two day takeout. And if you're doing very well, then take out one day, compound the other day, take out one day, compound the other day. But you can't expect to profit from drip if you just keep on taking the money out. You know, the way it's designed is for sustainability. And with all the new changes, the 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 decks coming out for drip the game coming out which is going to utilize the animal farm tokens the drip the drip network tokens everything from the forest shark ecosystem is going to be integrated into that game and with so much development happening there is so much that that we need to cover when it comes to drip and i'm really excited for that now if you guys uh believe in drip it's up to you if you want to get in i'm going to leave a link to all of that in, in in my videos, you can go check it out. You can enter into this coin if you want to. Again, anything, none of whatever I say is not financial advice, guys. So coming back to all of this, all of this cool stuff. Now I'm holding GNS and Vela for the midterm, and this is what I told my private group as well. Uh, but. Uh, what's going to happen now is that I am adding two new people to my team. These are some veteran crypto guys, crypto who understand this market, who really know what they're doing and have then they've made a lot of money for a lot of people. And uh, their friends have been happy. They've been wealthier. They've been happier. And um, they're going to be and I couldn't be more excited to get them on the team. Uh, and what's going to happen is that um uh, I will be expanding what I've been, like I said, I've been busy with the private group, so I've not been posting much here, but I, we will start to make more content here. However, I, we will be launching a Patreon very soon, very soon. And it's going to be at a very, very decent price point where I think anyone could enter and benefit from all the great alpha that we're going to be giving you guys. So Gains Network, DXP, I still think there's a lot of growth in here, but as you can see, I I got my private group at the right time into these coins. It's all about timing, guys, you know, and most people can't cover that. But you know what? I can because I keep looking at the markets and I keep understanding things and I know what works and what doesn't work. All right. Now, anything that I say is not financial advice, but uh, a lot of people have thanked me for all the results that I've give, given to them. And eventually you'll be able to get access to that once the Patreon launches. And uh, um, from now on, you're going to be seeing three different people on the on the DeFi Enthusiast channel. We're going to be posting way more content. I've been building this up for some time. There's a lot of new stuff coming up. Very, very excited for that. So this is me, the DeFi Enthusiast, signing out. But before I leave, here is a DJ and play right here for you. It's called Truth. Now, truth is true GPT because Elon Musk, if you remember last year, he just said if he gets arrested, call it Elon Gate. And somebody launched a coin called Elon Gate and, did, did, and I think it did 100x or something. Now he said, what we need is truth GPT. And somebody created this token, you know, and uh, it started to pump. So they have an entire roadmap, phase one, website creation, initial promotion, smart contract development, uh, true GPT token launch. Phase two, community growth, influencer, project partnerships, exchange listings, true GPT NFT collection. Phase three, true GPT AI, AI development, TB expansion, community events, mass adoption. Now, when I bought it, I put a, a bit of risk capital. Again, this is a clear DGen play with a 2.91 market cap at the time of this recording. Okay. And uh, in my view, this could do, I mean, it could do many X's. Who knows? Because... Um, 
Elon Gate did that, and um, they, these people, they have a clear roadmap. Uh, I checked their Telegram as well. Um, do your own research. I'm going to leave links to the website uh, if you want to get into it. Again, this is a complete degen play. Uh, however, when I bought it on PancakeSwap, it said it's a medium risk coin, which is very, very impressive for a project like this. Uh, so it's a complete hype coin at the moment, but it's got a real roadmap. Let's see what happens. Um, and uh, if you got in, if you got in at three zeros where where it was in the beginning, you already would have 10x or more. But I think it still has room to grow. However, don't take my word for it. Look into it. See if you feel comfortable and only put risk capital if you need to. Again, none of this is financial advice. So this is my last video as a DeFi enthusiast by himself. Can't wait to introduce you to the, 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 to, to the new team. Uh, things, uh, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming out. I'm very excited for that. And once again, this is me, the DeFi enthusiast, signing out. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. Bye.